Good evening and welcome to a special edition of Jesse Waters Primetime. I'm Kaylee McEnany. We begin with something breaking tonight. There is dissension among Kamala's ranks. Listen to this, Biden staffers rebelling against the nominee. And all of this as the media insist that Kamala is, quote, matched for the moment. Time Magazine is out with a new hot take, admitting that Kamala's time as VP was underwhelming, but perhaps because she was just never meant to be an understudy. Quote, judging from the past few weeks, Harris's own party underestimated her. Maybe the crowded 2020 primary just wasn't the right race for Harris to showcase her talents. Maybe the vice presidency wasn't the right role. Suddenly, she seems matched to the moment. But you cannot win a presidential campaign if you do not have a strategy. But Kamala's finally got one, emulate Trump. Here's how Kamala has been rolling into her recent tarmac rallies. Look at this. That looks a lot like the dozens and dozens of Trump tarmac rallies that the former president did in 2020. It's getting so bad that even CNN is noticing with this headline, Harris leans on the trappings of her office and Trump's own playbook in a quest to win the White House. But it's not just optics. Kamala isn't just stealing Trump's choreography. She's stealing his ideas too. After four years of letting in millions of illegals, Kamala's news, new ad would have you believe that she is the second coming of Donald Trump. She took on drug cartels and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. As vice president, she backed the toughest border control bill in decades. And as president, she will hire thousands more border agents and crack down on fentanyl and human trafficking. Fixing the border is tough. So is Kamala Harris. Why didn't she do it? She's had three and a half years. But that's not all. The vice president debuted a new policy proposal Saturday night, no taxes on tips. It is my promise to everyone here, when I am president, we will continue our fight for working families of America. Including to raise the minimum wage and eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. Right on cue, the media is fawning. This tipped wage piece is a, it, it, there's bipartisan movement here for this. Tipped wage workers are very important. Obviously, the backbone of the economy, specifically in a place like Las Vegas. And this is just one of those economic policies that will go to the heart of doing something directly for people. Well, the vice president has always said that she had a focus on the middle class and those that were aspiring to be in the middle class. And so eliminating uh, taxes on tips uh, will help people that go to work every day and bust their butts uh, to keep food on the table, clothes on their back, and a roof over their head. Now, this is a great idea. I wonder where she got it from. When I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips. No taxes on tips. Every time you leave a tip for the next five months, make sure to write on the receipt. Vote Trump for no tax on tips. I will eliminate all taxes on tips. A very simple statement, no taxes on tips. No tax on tips, remember, that's a big deal. That includes no tax on tips. Now even John Carl of ABC could not ignore the similarities. I wanna ask you about something that just came in last night. We saw a big speech in Nevada by uh, Kamala Harris and she came out for um, no tax on tips. Where have I heard that before? Well, Democrats know that's a winning policy, so much so that the White House now says President Biden even supports it. This is something that the president supports. Uh, he supports eliminating taxes on tips uh, for service and hospitality workers. But here's a talking point mysteriously missing from KJP's binder. Look at that. Kamala cast the tie-breaking vote to expand IRS oversight on taxing tips. And President Biden signed it into law. That's not all. As vice president, her administration added hordes of IRS workers to go after waiters, 
and waitresses. And meanwhile, Trump just released his 20 promises to America. I wonder how long it will take Kamala to steal some of those. So why is Kamala doing this? J.D. Vance sums it up perfectly. Kamala pretends to be a different person to different people. President Trump is right that she's a chameleon. She pretends to be one thing in front of one audience. She pretends to be something different in front of another audience. Look, Dana, she's not running a political campaign. She's running a movie. She only speaks to voters behind a teleprompter. Everything is scripted. She doesn't have her policy positions out there. She hasn't answered why she wanted to ban fracking, but now she doesn't. She wanted to fund police, but now she doesn't. She wanted to open the border, but now she doesn't. She should have to answer for why she presents a different set of policies to one audience and a different set of policies to another audience. And I think that's what President Trump is getting at. This is a fundamentally fake person. She's different depending on who she's in front of. So will the real Kamala Harris please stand up? I mean, her campaign website is bereft of any policy details, leaving Americans in the dark. And even the media is noticing. Look at this. Political Playbook says Kamala's campaign is heavy on propaganda, light on policy, noting that her campaign has been framed as a, quote, fight for the future without saying much about precisely what that future would entail. One anonymous frontline Democrat the lawmaker told Politico, why would we start talking about policy? We're actually better off just running on this wave of enthusiasm and energy. It's the best thing Harris can do. Hmm. Meanwhile, reports are coming in that some of Kamala's loyalists aren't happy with how Biden aides, known for putting down the vice president, are being kept around their political operation. And the Biden aides are not happy about it either. Apparently, listen to this, grumbling under their breath about having to work for Kamala, dissension in the ranks. Kamala's communication director denies Politico's reporting, but Kamala has a long documented track record of toxic workplaces. The father of a Harris intern wrote this back in 2019, that Kamala, quote, vocally throws around F-bombs, berates her staff, and listen to this, as attorney general, she demanded her staff stand every morning and say, good morning, general. Wow. And it hasn't gotten better during her White House tenure. While vice president, she's had a staff turnover rate of nearly 92%. And remember this guy, this is David Jens. Amid a Kamala staff exodus, he tweeted, quote, Hi, my name is David Jens. I work for Vice President Harris on behalf of the American people as Deputy Director for Operations, and I absolutely love my job. Just thought some of you should know. Now, that's definitely a natural, unprompted thing to say. Blink twice if you need help, David. While the American people get more familiar with the radical workplace Kamala has put together over the years, they should not forget about the radical policies she's been pushing for just as long. We've got to critically re-examine ICE, probably think about starting from scratch. I am prepared to get rid of the filibuster to pass a Green New Deal. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. And I actually feel very strongly about this, is that we need to have Medicare for all. Assault weapons right. that are already in circulation, what do you do about those? Well, there are approximately five million, to your point, Craig. We have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory buyback program. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.